Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bloom in the Desert Ministries, United Church of Christ and Reconciling Ministries Congregation for Sunday worship. For those of us uh, gathered here in leadership spread out across the Coachella Valley, for all of you who are in viewership across the country and maybe even around the world, we are grateful to be with you on this Sunday morning. It's especially nice to be with you today as today is um, the uh, the second Sunday of March is the 18th anniversary of our uh, con uh, continuously having Sunday morning worship services uh, coming to the world from uh, uh, here from Palm Springs, California. We began in the Rose Garden at Palapas Art Garden and Nursery and uh, continued on at the Palm Springs YMCA, which morphed into the Duluth Community Center which uh, sits there waiting for us to come back after the pandemic. And we have now for uh, more than a year now been um, virtuous, uh, virtuous and virtual. I think we've been virtuous and virtual in these uh, worship services as we've been coming to you in this fashion and um, you know, learning every single Sunday as, as we go along. And we're grateful to have you with us today. Um, it is wonderful to have you here. It is also nice if people share your screen with your friends on Facebook, and uh, I'm sure you might know how to share things, and it is perfectly okay, and we're going to start to try to remember to encourage people to do this, uh, to share um, and uh, uh, be able to help spread the word about Bloom, and we look forward to being able to welcome your friends, our friends, everyone's friends, as uh, we gather together, as we, as we have heard on the mu with our music with Dr. Dennis Marine, as we are gathered by the river uh, here this morning, we are grateful. We also note that uh, this is Women's History Month in the month of March in the United States, and most of our hymns we are using this month are written, translated, or adapted or put to music by women. In addition, each Sunday, we are highlighting one young woman who has made an important contribution to her community, to our community, uh, and around the world. Um, and this, uh, these are suggestions that have come from the Women of Bloom. Uh, we are this week uh, uh, raising uh, the uh, awareness in our bulletin of, of, of uh, Greta Thunberg, who is the young, um, internet, you know, climate activist uh, who has been so uh, phenomenal and effective in communicating uh, uh, environmental concerns around the world. And so we raise her for her leadership uh, and, and uh, being a historic woman, even in her young age. As we do each week, we light a candle on our worship center as a symbol of Christ, the light of the world. That's our tradition. Uh, in the sense of understanding Jesus as the light of the world, and also remembering how Jesus said, you are the light of the world. So this candle um, is a representative symbol today with us this morning, um, but when, the, when it is extinguished at the end of our service, the light does not go out because you carry that light wherever you are and wherever you go. We also encourage folks, if you like, to light a candle in your homes or wherever you are as you are uh, listening and watching this um, uh, service uh, to join us in, in that action. So feel free to participate in that, in that way. As the United Church of Christ, we do our very best to live up to the modern motto, which says, whoever you are and wherever you are on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. So we are very, in very intentional in our language and in our actions to do our very best to be able to be welcoming to people who are representative in the broad spectrum of God's creation so that we know that people love one another in various ways and we are gay and straight and bisexual. We remember that people are uh, identify gender identity across the spectrum of God's creation and People are transgender, cisgender, gender non-binary, gender non-declaring, uh, and intersex. And so it is uh, important for us to recognize people as you understand and see yourself from the inside out rather than an identity we would foist upon you. We also know that we come from a wide variety of backgrounds and perspectives and status 
and abilities, and we do our very best to uh, welcome uh, understanding that we are all part of God's creation. And biblically, uh, God is created, God created, uh, you know, God, God is created humanity in God's image. So therefore, we look at ourselves, we look among ourselves, I look at you, and we see the image of God. So that is our understanding and, and our welcome. Please sign in on the comments. I know that folks are already doing that, letting us know that you're here. If this is your very first time with us on a Sunday morning, please feel free to note that um, and to uh, allow us to be able to welcome you in, 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 uh, in, in our fashion. We also know that if uh, you would like to receive our weekly newsletter that has in it the bulletin for these Sundays, as well as the um, song sheets for the songs that we sing, congregational singing, uh, that you are able to sign up for that weekly electronic newsletter by going to our website at bloominthedesert.org, www.bloominthedesert.org, going down just a little ways, scrolling down and putting your email in there. And in a little while, uh, a, a week or so, the uh, uh, newsletters will start coming to you and you'll have that convenience and be able to have those items to download as well as know what's going on in Bloom World. So we appreciate uh, your doing that with us. Also, feel free to put prayer requests in the comment section. My husband, Mike, is on the other side of the camera here writing those down as uh, you know we are able to be able to include them later in our service. Be aware that this is a public forum it's the internet, nothing ever goes away. So, you know, you want to maintain privacy matters in that way. We are grateful for all the persons participating in our worship leadership today uh, from around the Coachella Valley um, and outside the, just outside the Coachella Valley this morning, as uh, we have Bob Patnode and Ray Stimson are coming to us from their home in Cathedral City. Uh, we know that um, uh, 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 Linda Lang, Linda Luther Lang is coming to us from Banning, uh, just through the Banning Pass. And uh, it is Banning, right? Yeah, yeah, Banning. Um, uh, and and uh, we know that uh, uh, among our musicians, Dr. Dennis Marine is with us from his home. Uh, Ken and the Bloom Tones Quartet today of uh, J.R. Rash, Rod Rash Clausen, Brian Herman, and special guest Phyllis Ramsey are, are singing from their location in Cathedral City. We're also grateful that uh, Elaine Wong Meyerhofer uh, is offering a special piece of music uh, along with Paul Gibb on the piano. So these are this is a wonderful day. We're grateful for the flowers that are on our worship center, symbolic of the living Christ and offered to the glory of God by Jack and Megan Cassette with gratitude for vaccines and renewed hope for in-person worship sometime in the months to come. And we are also inviting anyone who would like to, to um, use the link that comes in Bloom Notes and join us for hospitality time on Zoom immediately following worship. There are other announcements and uh, statistics in the bulletin that you may find, so feel free to check those out for yourself. One announcement, Bloom specific announcement that we would like to offer is coming to us from our social actions and mission uh, uh, co-coordinator, John Miller. And so John, come on over and uh, tell us what you've got for us. Good morning. We have an opportunity this week uh, to participate in a food drive for um, the LGBT Center of the Desert. Their food bank is asking for another um, refurbishment. So they, we found out that they really love it when Bloom comes over because we have the Good News golf cart leading the way with really great disco music. And we have a, a good 10 or 12 cars every time. So they tell us how much they appreciate us doing this. So this is the third time we've done this this year. Um, there is an announcement in Bloom Notes, so I won't repeat everything, but it is this Saturday, March 20, and we meet at the Bloom office on El Cielo at 10 a.m., and we depart by 10.15. It's, it's really easy, and all the details are in the Bloom Notes. Thank you. 
Thank you, John. And we look forward to that next Saturday morning. So we'll look forward to traveling along with you. I want to also mention, we're always grateful for Hugo Chavez, who is our technical wizard, who is helping us with uh, production this morning. So great to have you there. And we also today as our music of centering, uh, we will be receiving music as uh, that was the, the, the tune and words that were the very first piece of music that we played in a Bloom in the Desert Ministries worship service. And so it's been my little favorite tradition to have us have that be our music of centering uh, each, um, each anniversary Sunday as we come around in that way. Today, morning has broken. Will be sung by Elaine Wong Meyerhofer, accompanied on the piano by Paul Gibb. And following that, our call to worship and other prayers will be led by Robert Patnode and Ray Stimson as uh, they bring us that portion of our service. So let us now be together as morning has broken. Good morning. Please join us in our responsive call to worship. This is the day our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day we celebrate the 18th anniversary of our first gathering for worship in a rose garden. We know it's not about the place. It's about the people gathering in love's service. We know it's about our relationship with God and each other, growing in faith and making real God's dream for eternity. This is the day our God has made. Now let us rejoice and be glad in it. Shalom, Shalom salam, ping on, paz, paz, peace, amen. amen. In honor of our 18th anniversary here at Bloom, our opening hymn will be this is the day of new beginnings, led by our music director, Ken Forney and the Bloom Tones Trio. The music may be found on your song sheet. Time to remember and move on. Time 
This is the time in our worship when, in faith, we open our hearts to ministry with our prayer for good and growth. Let us pray as a statement of our faith now and a call to action for our future. Molder and shaper of earth, you build us to be people loving one another. By loving others, we love you. When we stretch ourselves thin, Remold us into vessels that can hold strength and nourishment. When we get pushed down, shape our courage to reach up and extend into the world. When we feel torn and broken, mend us to health and happiness. You are the potter, the mender, the eternal one who renews us. Help us carry the weight of personal responsibility to do what we can to live well and share your abundance. Amen. Loving creator, wonderful counselor, receive now our silent prayers. Eternal source of love and creativity, receive our silent prayers. To Amen. To all our silent prayers, let the people say Amen. Amen. The Receive now the, these words of encouragement. Throughout our sacred text, when God calls women and men to faithful living, God gives us this clear promise, I will be with you. Amen. Let us now receive the word. Please, please join our musicians in singing our response, followed by Mike Shear presenting our Hebrew scripture reading. Hebrew scripture reading this morning will be Psalm 126. When Yahweh brought us captives back to Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Our mouths were filled with laughter then, our tongues with songs of joy. And from the nations we heard, their God has done great things for them. Yes. Yahweh has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Now set our captive hearts free, Yahweh. Make them like streams in the driest desert. Then those who now sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. 
Those who go out weeping as they carry their seed for sowing will come back with shouts of joy as they carry their harvest home. Here ends the Hebrew scripture reading. After a moment for silent reflection, Linda Lang will present our gospel reading. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the chosen one must be lifted up. So that everyone who believes in the chosen one might have eternal life. Yes, God so loved the world as to give the only begotten one that whoever believes may not die, but have eternal life. God sent the only begotten into the world, not to condemn the world, but that through the only begotten, the world might be saved. Whoever believes in the only begotten avoids judgment, but whoever doesn't judge, believe is judged already for not believing in the name of the only begotten of God. On the grounds is sentence pronounced that though the light came into the world, people showed they preferred darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. Indeed, people who do wrong hate the light and avoid it for fear their actions will be exposed. But people who live by the truth come out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what they do is done in God. Here ends the reading of the gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God, amen. Our commentary will be presented today by the Reverend Dr. Kevin A. Johnson. Thank you, Linda and Mike for those readings of our scriptures. We appreciate the life that you bring to these ancient words. Let us pray. Loving God, continue to guide us in this time of worship. We know wherever we are that we are united by your spirit in this very special spiritual time. We continue with these Sunday morning gatherings because we are doing our very best to bring goodness into the world and to bring your love into the hearts of all who gather. We pray that the word that you have for each of us among all of these words that swirl around us, the word that you have is the word that we will receive and it's the word that we need. Bless us as we continue on. We know you are faithful in doing that. We pray in such a way that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable to you, O God, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. In the story cycle of Jesus Christ, we are moving toward Holy Week, which by its events might be called Hell Week in some other organizations. But Holy Week it is called, and that's the description, because it's a week like no other in, uh, in religious tradition and religious heritage. Now, some scholars say that holy means set apart. That's what I learned in eighth or ninth grade confirmation class. Holy means set apart. Theologian Marcus Borg, who I learned about much later in life, has uh, been, a, and, and he's been a transformative power in my theological understandings and ways of thinking. He wants us to think of the word holy as meaning compassion. So when we read holy, see compassion. Now I think that both definitions work because compassion certainly is set apart from the controversial, from the conventional ways of our thinking in society today. So holy week, set apart week, compassion week is ahead. And the teachings of Jesus get deeper. So let's dive in. The reason that Psalm 126 was celebrating 
was that the people released from captivity were coming home. They have been captured by foreign invaders and carried away from their homes to serve new masters. For the Jewish nation, great stretches of their history were spent in service to domineering powers. And their experience continues to influence their sacred senses. From our Sunday school days and Hollywood movies, I suppose we remember best about ancient Jewish history. What we remember best are the stories of Egyptian slavery and miraculous escape, about Moses and Aaron leading the people on a wandering journey to the promised land. But there were also times when the Jewish community was conquered by Babylonia and Assyria. So Egypt was not the only bad guy in the relationship. Babylonia and Assyria also were conquerors. And the people were, play, were completely displaced from the lives that they knew. Therefore, let's imagine for ourselves the thrill that they and others experienced coming back home. The post the ancient post-captivity feelings of joy and relief. Think of the mid 20th century post-war feelings of our parents and grandparents as the opportunities and excitement following World War II. Think of the imagined post-pandemic feelings and activities we anticipate on our horizons. These bring us the thrill that we experience in a sense of coming back home. Now, the reason the psalm singers cried when they carried the grain out to the field for planting was they knew they would not be eating the bread that that grain would produce. The reason they rejoiced coming back home one stanza later was that they would eat what they had planted. Slavery was a time when they were not able to benefit from their own labors. Freedom and liberty and going back home was a time when they would be able to. From the rest of the story, we know that their excitement will not last forever because we know that what needs mending in the world was and is still not fixed. Still not fixed. I can think of two examples in our American history when people were taken from their homes and put to work and purposes for others. Think of Africans stolen and shipped to the so-called new world and sold into slavery. Think of the indigenous tribes driven from their native homes and to completely unfamiliar places or killed in the places they slept sent away from where they were familiar and their sacred places. You know, we pray every year, uh, once in a while, uh, a prayer that hopes for a day when farm workers who plant our fruits and vegetables can afford to buy and eat the produce they harvest. We pray a prayer every now and then that hopes for a day when workers who clean our homes and hotels will be able to afford homes of their own. The human beings shipped to this continent and elsewhere in the slave economy hoped and prayed for days when they would be able to enjoy the land of liberty that they served and benefit from the, the economy that they empowered. Indigenous Native Americans pray now and protest now, pipelines and walls, hoping for the day when the land and culture of their sacred heritage is once again respected as their own, as it was in the beginning. But even in our time, there are people in power who want to stop any of that hope and happiness coming to fruition. The good news promise in the Gospel of John, the gospel that we have that tells us about Jesus, means to instill hope and reassurance in the minds of people hearing the words. 
I've always enjoyed those first sections and have preached more than once on the familiar verse of John 3.16, and of course, I'm always adding 17. But the rest of the passage has not been included because I found it problematic. The words seem to diminish or vilify people who ascribe to beliefs other than Christian. But lately, the Holy Spirit has been working with my thinking. And I realize I've been seeing these words one dim words one dimensionally and functioning only in a religious sense. Today, I can say I've come to see the Gospel of John is more than a religious document. It was written to help people get through difficult times. It was written for a broad audience of Christ seekers and skeptics in another time when conquests and fears were ruling and ruining common lives. So the promise coming to them was that the persons treating them so poorly will eventually receive justice. John's gospels tell us, indeed, people who do wrong hate the light and avoid it for fear their actions will be exposed. As I've said before, history shows us all tyrants fall. Let me suggest that what we are witnessing, let me suggest to you that we are witnessing now a transformational era when there is a chance for common ordinary people to have better lives for themselves. But still people may need help and everybody needs love. So it's the work of us as a congregation, as a church, as a community, and as a nation to enable our mutual advance. Let me tell you about a lesbian activist and clergy woman I've admired greatly for more than 20 years. I'm not sure she has any idea how influential and inspirational she is for me. Recently, she decided to post online some of her own woman's history. I was taken aback and taken in by the herstory she presented. In the midst of the COVID-19 rescue bill passing and all the talk swirling around about who needs what and who shouldn't need anything and who will get too much and on and on and on. Here's what she wrote. I realize I need to be more open. I need to come out. Before remarks surface to shame people in need, I want to let you know that I am a welfare kid. All the nasty things people say against poor people can be said about my family. When I was growing up, my family needed the social safety net. We got government surplus food boxes, powdered milk, powdered eggs, spam, canned beef, blocks of cheese. And at times we got relief checks, welfare as some people call it. One sibling went to Head Start at church for free. Salvation Army had a terrific gym where our memberships and after school care really cost 50 cents a year. We were never homeless thanks to the help, but we never had a car. We had no phone and once in a while, no electricity, usually brief until my mom could pay the light bill. Our church supplemented us at different times. If my or your family needs these things, please don't let others shame us. Encourage people toward empathy and be confident that you are worth it. One of the most general parts, one of the most generous parts of the social safety net in my day was our excellent public school education and inexpensive state college tuition. I thank all who worked so hard to deliver this recent relief package. I saw the food pantry lines and have hope that these measures 
help people push on. I especially like the program for families and children. They say it could really reduce poverty. I know my family was lifted. Let's be generous and risk loving our neighbors. Now, this is a personal testimony of a deeply committed woman, a woman of faith who has lived life on the razor edge of family survival and justice seeking protest. And I know she has prayed compassionate prayers for enemies and friends alike. The Reverend Sue Laurie gives life to these words from Albert Einstein. We are part of the whole, which we call the universe, but it is an optical delusion of our mind that we think we are separate. That sep this separateness is like a prison for us. Our job is to widen the circle of our compassion so we feel connected with all people and situations. Einstein was a brilliant thinker who many say was like no other. And yet he believed and said that even in our uniqueness as individuals, it is delusionary to think we are separate from one another. A modern day prophet and civil rights leader, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. So, you know, we know that there are bumpy roads ahead. And we know that our resources are limited to what we can provide. So how do we embrace the future that we have before us? Like the psalmist and like Jesus, we will do our best as we remember honestly, think broadly, and dream dreams. The other day, the CEO of Pfizer Corporation was on one of the morning news talk shows, talking about the way his company tackled the challenge of developing their COVID-19 vaccine. Before talking business, he mentioned his personal history. Before he was born, his parents were captured by Nazis and held prisoner. His mother was stood up in, against a wall in front of a firing squad one day, and she never knew why she and another person were at the last minute taken out of the line at the last terrifying minute. She, she survived the war while so many perished. And the CEO's son said, many Holocaust survivors will not talk about their experience, but his mother would talk about it all the time. And she used it to strengthen and motivate them. The common refrain she repeated to encourage the family was, I was up against the wall of a firing squad and here I am so I could have you. With that heritage, the CEO of Pfizer feels a great responsibility to life. He said he applies that sense to his business practices and promotes three concepts to produce great results among his company collaborators. The first is to remember common luck comes to those who are prepared. Now I know from my studies, my studies that were gained, you know, in large part from public school education and from, you know, cheap state school college tuition, uh, like Sue Laurie talked about. I know from my studies that this paraphrases a great philosopher Seneca, who we think said, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. The second concept uh, from the Pfizer meme is thinking big always makes the impossible possible. And thirdly, the CEO said, we trust the power of science. Good for him. We trust the power of science or think of it as trusting the power of innovation. 
prepare, think big, innovate. This could be the credo for our congregation and for ourselves as we look forward to the days of returning from the exile imposed by pandemic. These could be the attitudes we express when we confront the injustices of people who do not appreciate the light of spiritual growth and empathy and inclusiveness. These could be the ways we figure out how to do what needs to be done so that our ministries of justice and compassion continue moving forward, doing good well as we have done thus far. 18 years ago, on a Sunday morning, March 9th, which was the second Sunday in March, Mike and I got up early and followed plans that had been laid to meet some early bloomers and get set up for our very first worship service. It was a little bit like the way we do things now and a whole lot different. But still, the words of our hymns today, all of our hymns, the words of our hymns today blend to describe the hopes and dreams we have carried along with our nerves and uncertainties. As so many people know, I am happy to tell stories about our Palapas days. Tell me the stories of Palapas I love to hear. I love to tell those stories. And I love that we have a new little video that we're going to be showing in the future that's created to give an overview that conveys the sense of our mission and vision and values. The last stanza, <coughs> excuse me, that's never happened before. The last stanza of our closing hymn by Ruth Duck prays very well what we hoped God would do with us. These are the words we'll sing at the, in the, you know, close to the end of our service. By your spirit of creation, keep us bold for risking still. Eager in anticipation, ever strong to do your will. Bind us close to one another, sharing life and death and birth. Welcoming as sister, brother, all your children on the earth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning will be, God, we thank you for our people. Now, these are new words to an old Methodist hymn tune uh, that I grew up singing my whole life. Uh, but we will sing, God, we thank you for our people, led by Ken Forney and the Bloom Tones Quartet. Uh, the music was written by Ruth Duck, and, and it may be found on your song sheets.
Good to sing that song together to the tune of uh, Holy Manna. We are um, also, you know, I'm noting in my mind that I had the order of the hymns a little wrong in my understanding, but my getting things out of order is nothing new. So, um, you know, I'm glad that we're all able to, including me, roll along with that sort of thing. We continue in our worship service as we are offering our prayers, our joys, our thanksgivings, our concerns, and we are um, receiving those that have been written in the, in the um, comments section. Uh, we also note that people have prayers and thoughts, you know, on your own uh, rather than sharing them publicly, and so we also encourage you to keep those in mind as we enter into this time of prayer and meditation. So let us now, uh, we will go into this time of prayer and then after, uh, afterwards, um, we will be led in the sung response using uh, the words that we are using um, throughout the Lenten season that you find printed in the bulletin. Let us go into this time of prayer together as we uh, join and after each section, we will say, God receive our prayer. Let us pray. We offer prayers for our treasurer, Rich Flickling and his family upon the passing of his mother this week. We offer prayers for the families all affected by the 534,000 deaths from COVID that have happened in our own, in our, in our country only, and the 29.4 million cases in the United States. We offer prayers for a pain-free day for Keisha D and all who are suffering chronic pain. We offer prayers for Gary's husband, Robert, who is experiencing recurring AFib. We offer prayers for all those who are seeking new lives and asylum at our Southern borders as they face the dangers and do the and do the journey hoping for a better life for them and their children we offer prayers for our leaders that they continue to work to do good for the people they serve And together, for all these concerns, we pray, God, receive our prayer. In our joys and thanksgivings, we are thankful for a congressional representative in our district who is a doctor and is able to administer vaccines and himself says it feels like injecting joy and happiness into the lives of the people in his district. We offer thanksgiving that 27% of United States adults have had their first COVID shot and 15% are now fully vaccinated.
Russ and Steve offer and lead us in being grateful for Bloom and Bloomers in their lives during this stressful time. And we offer prayers of joy for Brian Herman's continued healing. We offer continued thanksgiving for God's enabling the life of this congregation through all the ways in which people and resources are joined together to share God's love in as many ways as possible. Always remembering that whoever we are and wherever we are from and however our lives are being experienced at any time, we are welcome in congregation and in relationship with each other. And together we pray, God, receive our prayer. Amen. We continue in our worship time together as we bring our prayer, our offerings of, you know, our, 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 our support for the mission, vision, and values of this congregation. We are grateful as Hugo puts the slide up that shows there are a variety of ways in which persons are able to uh, contribute to the life of our congregation um, through our website, bloominthedesert.org, uh, through texting to the 800 number that's listed there sending donations through the mail to our office address as you see it listed and are able to find it online and also that people set up uh, banking relationships that uh, send contributions on a regular basis. We're also grateful for those who participate in the way of uh, Amazon Smile and the local Ralphs and Savon um, community giving programs. So we're grateful for that. And we know that this is one of the ways in which we are able to empower the vitality of our loving mission uh, for God's love and good works of our vision and our values. Our offertory meditation music this morning is entitled Fantasies Come True, played on the piano by Dr. Dennis Marine.
please join me in our prayer of dedication. O oh God of boundless love, you restore our strength through faith in your goodness. You look with favor upon us and through Christ redeem us. You take not yourself from us, but promise your presence through the gift of your spirit. You come from behind to push us and go before us as our guide. Accept now what we bring to you in response to your encompassing care of us. Amen. Please join our musicians in singing our doxology, followed by Rev Kev leading us in the prayer of Jesus. Want to offer a note that Dennis chose the particular tune that he played for our offertory music from the musical Avenue Q, which opened off Broadway in February 2003, one month before Bloom in the Desert held our first service. That's a loving touch. Avenue Q echoes Bloom's missions. The story takes place in a diverse, inclusive community where people come together to share their dreams. In this song, we hear a recurring rhythmic phrase set to the words, fantasies come true. We appreciate that loving gesture from Dr. Dennis Marine, and we join in, in thanking him and thanking God as we pray together this prayer, the prayer of Jesus, using the words most familiar and the language most familiar to you, saying, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now for that old Methodist connection, our hymn this morning will be uh, Oh for a World with words written by uh, Miriam Therese Winter. Led by our musicians, the music may be found on your song sheets. Let us sing together. <laughs> Blessing and let us join together in our benediction. 
Our worship is ended, our service begins. What does God need from us? Simply do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Continue to serve with faith and love. Depart from this time today committed to sharing the best of yourself through extravagant generosity of time and resources, meeting the needs of others, both spoken and unspoken, seen and unseen, heard and unheard. We will go now to share that compassion with the world. My dear friends in faith, will you go from wherever you are into the world to be the people of God in Christ's name? We, we will. will. Amen. Let us offer to one another signs of grace and peace and go in peace. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you.